okay first of all don't do body shaming and secondly don't be so harsh on yourself i mean yes of course you gain some kilos but you still look good you still look iconic so why do you have to be so hard on yourself and of course if that makes you feel better you can still lose some weight so don't worry little 500 you'll be better if you want to Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to another video. Today I'm with this 2022 Fiat 500X. Of course we're going to review the interior. I do actually like how they decided to shape the steering wheel and actually the fake leather doesn't feel that bad. The exterior and finally no fake exhaust at all. And we're gonna see how it drives. And then if you watched my videos you would already know that I like cars in which you can see the limit of the bonnet and that's the case. So Good job! I'm of course Alessio and you're watching the Elliot Club. Now, the 500X. This car actually had some restyling, but unfortunately here you can really tell if this is the restyling one or not, even though this is the 2022 model, because mainly the thing that has changed was the headlights, which is full LED now, but unfortunately it doesn't come as standard, as you can see over here, because this is still halogen, and that's a shame in my opinion. But there is something that I like about these halogen headlights, which is the 500 signature that is inside the headlights here. But moving to the lower part, we do find actually something that is LED, which is the daytime running light, which are super bright, to be honest. And I also like how they shape them. And then unfortunately, we do find these ugly fog lights, which are still halogen. I don't actually understand why they decided to go for halogens for both fog light and headlights and going LED just for the daytime running lights. It's weird. Moving to the central part, with the restyling, basically nothing has changed. We still find the big Fiat logo and the chrome signature that I don't particularly like, but this is basically a my thing since I don't like chromes at all. Moving to the side of the car, we do find here those 17 alloy wheels, which are actually optional. For me, it's crazy that a car like this comes a standard with 15 inches. I mean, look at the car, look at the wheels. Do you think 15 inches are fine? They are not to me. I don't know, let me know what you think in the comment down below. And if you agree with me, let me know. And what do you think about this side view? To be honest with you guys, for being a crossover, I think it's pretty standard. Nothing too crazy here. Basically, there are no lines at all, in which is a good thing. In my opinion, since nowadays, most of the manufacturers are going all over the place, trying to give some sportiness to those crossovers. But I think it's not necessary. I mean, they're doing a lot of crisis and a lot of lines for no reasons at all, in my opinion. Moving to the back of the car, we do find here those beautiful LED tail lights, which are shaped really good, in my opinion. And a little spoiler in here. Unfortunately, we still find here this chrome bar with the 500X logo in here and the Fiat logo as well. Moving to the bumper area. As I said before, for the side view, nothing too crazy, no crazy lines, no crisis for no reasons. And finally, no fake exhaust at all, which is good because nowadays most of the manufacturers are going crazy for adding so many fake exhausts that are annoying me so much. Being a crossover, it should mean that you should have a lot of boot capacity, isn't it? Well, unfortunately, this is not the case. You just have 350 liters of boot capacity. And actually, to be honest with you guys, this is not a well-designed boot. First thing first, the lead cover doesn't fit underneath the booth. Actually, guys, how do you call this thing? I mean, sometimes I call it shelf, sometimes I call it lot cover. But since English is not my mother tongue, let me know how you call this, because I'm really confused on how to call it. And secondly, you will just find some courtesy light in here, but you won't find any hooks and any 12 volt socket, which is a shame. But actually it's not that bad, since you'll find some spare wheels underneath the boot, which might come handy in some occasions or two. Also, the load lip is not that huge and if you fold down your seats, you'll have a pretty flat surface in which you can carry basically longer items. And now it's time for the honor test. 
Now let's talk about build quality. For being a car that costs just over 20,000 euros, of course you'll find some hard plastic materials here, but actually if you touch it and if you squeeze it, it doesn't feel that cheap. So I think it's pretty good for this kind of price. Apart from the armrest, which is pretty soft, everything you touch here is made out of plastic, which is fine. I mean, for 20,000 euros, what do you expect? Moving to the interior, actually, it's not that bad. Of course, you'll find some scratchy plasticky materials, as you might hear. But I mean, overall, the build quality that you feel here is of a pretty solid car. I do actually like how they decided to shape the steering wheel and actually the fake leather doesn't feel that bad. There are some details inside of this cabin that I absolutely love. First, they decided to recreate the Italian flag, which is a pretty fine touch in my opinion. Secondly, there are some 500 logos here on the transmissions and here on the side of the cabin, which are pretty good. From all of these details, you might actually understand whether a car is well designed or not. One of the biggest issues that I faced while driving this car is the resolution of the big screen that you have in front of you. It's pretty low res and when the sun goes through it you barely see anything at all. Talking about the infotainment system actually is not that bad. You can easily navigate through it and it comes a standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and the connection with the cable is basically instantaneous. But, and there is a but, one of the biggest issues that I face while using this infotainment system is that Apple CarPlay or Android Auto doesn't fulfill completely the 7 inch screen which is so freaking annoying. If you use this infotainment system with your phone, I'm going to assure you that you will misclick and you'll mistouch some icons and you'll end up in another menu that you don't want to while driving. Now, thanks God, they still use some physical knobs to control your air conditioning and, it thought, and it's not actually touchscreen as many car manufacturers are doing right now. In that case, it would be pretty annoying. But this is not the case. You still find your beautiful physical knobs which is a great thing in my opinion. Moving to the lower central part, you'll find two USB ports to connect your device and a 12 volt socket. One bad aspect about this interior is that the glove box is really small, it's really hard to reach, the handle doesn't feel that good, it's pretty plasticky, but actually if you're having hard times with this glove box, you'll find some extra room in this hidden box in here. But actually if I was in Fiat, I would have had a locker in here so that you can secure your stuff. One of the weirdest things that I found out in this car is why the heck the passenger has the opportunity to lock or unlock all of the doors inside of the car. I mean it's weird, I've never seen anything like that, why is that? One thing that is worth mentioning though is that you won't find any courtesy lights inside and also the lights that you will have inside of your car will be halogen. You won't find any LED at all, which is a shame. Moving to the back of the car, actually, I'm 5.6 feet tall and I have plenty of room for my head and plenty of room for my knees, but I'm pretty short and this is my driving position. If you are taller than me, you will struggle a lot in here. Definitely, it's not for carrying three fully adults. Maybe it's for some teenagers or maybe one adult that will struggle anyway and one teenager. If you just carry two people in here, they will struggle a lot. Then you'll find just one USB port in here and there is no armrest at all, which is a shame in my opinion. Another issue that one of your passengers might face is that the windows doesn't go fully down, but actually it stops at the very half, which is really, really bad. Now let's see how this Fiat 500X drives. Now the first thing that I want to mention about this car that maybe to most of you guys will seem like a pointless thing to say, but to me it's important actually, is how good this turning signal sounds. It feels like a mechanical sound, feels like a really heavy sound that is pretty good. Uh, actually, you might hear it now. Now, even though we are talking about a crossover that weighs almost 1,400 kilos, it's something like 1,395 kilos-ish, but you will see it right here. Actually, it doesn't feel heavy at all. I mean, it's pretty stable at cornering and it doesn't have the classic effect that you might face 
while driving a crossover which is like the bubble effect like if you're driving a kind of a bubbles and you actually could feel this sensation while driving also the old Fiat 500 the standard one actually with the restyling and especially in the Abarth they fixed it because you don't feel that bubble effect anymore but back in the days when the first Abarth models were released you could actually feel that sensation way too much in my opinion and that was actually one of the main first complaining that that car received back in the days so yeah here of course we are talking about a different car it just have the 500 name on it but still in some SUVs and some crossover you still feel that sensation but here actually you don't feel that bubble effect that much so they did a pretty good job the engine on this car is a 1 liter 3 cylinder with 120 horsepower and even though you might think that this is not enough for this kind of car actually it's a pretty enjoyable engine it covers 0 to 100 in 10.9 seconds ish which is not bad and actually this engine wants to be revved all the way up till 5000 rpm because then it's dead actually and it's pretty a pretty pretty fun car i have to say i didn't expect that now even though i like the shape of the steering wheel there is something that annoys me way too much If you want to turn up or down the volume of what you're listening in that moment actually it will be extremely hard because they decided to add those buttons on the rear of the steering wheel which will be extremely hard to reach to be honest and that's pretty annoying now this car comes a standard with the adaptive cruise control which is a nice thing and it can also read all the road signs that you're facing in that moment now one thing that doesn't come as a standard that forces you to go through different trim levels or through the optional list is the blind spot and actually that's a shame in my opinion another thing that is low key in my opinion is about the parking sensor i think they install them way too high and sometimes they fail while going in reverse or while parking which could be annoying to be honest even because visibility at the back is not that great now the steering wheel is not too heavy which is a good thing in crossovers but at the same time it's neither too direct so I don't know I mean you can expect these kind of things for a 20,000 euros car but still I would have preferred it a little bit more pointy you know the manual transmissions feels pretty good of course it's not the smoothest out there it's not like the one that I tried on the VSST but still it's pretty decent so you won't have any issues now in terms of full consumptions actually I made a lot of highway and I've been into a lot of traffic jam as well and the average was 12.5 kilometers per liter so pretty average one thing that I absolutely like about this car is the opportunity that gives you to choose between kilometers per hour and miles per hour so yeah my English friends you won't have any issues with this car even though it's Italian so don't worry and then if you watched my videos you would already know that I like cars in which you can see the limit of the bonnet and that's the case so good job so what do you think about this Fiat 500X? Well, the competition for the crossover market is pretty tough. There will be some cars that have a better boot capacity and some cars that have better build quality. Overall, if you decide to go for this car, you do it for the look and because this car actually is an icon. It comes from the Fiat 500, which is of course one of the best selling vehicles ever. So yeah, now the main competitor for this car will be the Volkswagen T-Roc, the Nissan Juke or maybe the Toyota CHR. But in my opinion, none of the cars that I just listed comes even close when we talk about heritage. And what about you? What do you think about this Fiat 500X? Would you buy it or would you go for something else? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you like this video, please put a like and subscribe. I'm of course Alessio and you watched The Elliot Club.